In the first two videos of this module, we've learned about spawning processes and message passing between processes. Now there's something we need to discuss a little bit, and that is how the process is created. We never want to create a never ending process. When building distributed or concurrent systems, this is bad for several reasons, like consuming resources, system stability, scalability challenges, maintenance difficulties, just difficulty in monitoring and debugging in general. And this is just to name a few. Now we are going to learn about process linking and process monitoring. So how can we get into a position where we have a never ending process? Let's go ahead and open up our terminal and start an IEX shell. We're gonna do everything in the Elixir shell for for this video. And let's just run through a quick example. So let's create a process and we'll just set it to a variable PID and we're gonna spawn a process the way that we've been doing it. But we're not going to, we're not doing anything fancy here. We're just going to set up a function that's going to listen for messages. So we're just going to do a receive and then a do and then we can take a message and um, re just return the message. So it'll go straight through and then end that function and end the receive block as well and then close off those spawn parentheses. What we're doing here is we're just creating a process that will listen for a message. But if it never receives a message, it's just going to sit there and exist and exist. So it will never end. Right. So boom, we created that. And then I can go ahead and do like process dot is alive or it's just alive and pass in that process ID and it is alive. So true. We currently have access to this process because we have the process ID stored in a variable. But what happens if our current Elixir shell, crashes. So first, I just want to show you self, our current process ID is 109. And if we crash our shell, and we can do that by just doing process.exit, passing in self here. I don't think we actually need the parentheses. Um, and then our message, and we'll just say crash. And so boom, our shell crashed. So the process ID 109. And now if I check self, we have a new process ID. So the problem is we don't have access to that PID variable anymore. It's undefined. So we now have a process floating out there and there's no way to stop that process. Luckily, we can spawn a process using spawn link. And what this does is if any linked process crashes and restarts, all the processes that are linked will exit, leaving no chance for a never ending process to stay up. In our case, that process we've lost forever, like we can't recover it. So let's go ahead and just close that IEX session and we'll start a new one. And if we want to now use spawn link, we're going to create the same exact function we did. We'll set, we'll set it to a PID variable. And instead of just calling spawn, we're going to call spawn link and we're going to pass in an anonymous function. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create, create just a receive block that's going to listen and listen for messages being sent to this process. So message and then just return a message and then end that function and end our receive block and then close off the spawn link parentheses. So now when I hit enter, we created another process. So process dot alive, pass in our PID. It is alive. That is true. And now if we check self, we're currently on our a 109 process ID. Now I'm not going to crash the shell again, but if I crash our process that we created, it's going to also shut down and restart the Elixir shell process because they're linked. So if I crash the shell, it would also um, 
kill the process that we created before, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do... Hi, I'm Jacob. My YouTube channel and podcast reach thousands of engaged Elixir developers every month. If you're looking to promote your developer tools, services, or job opportunities to a focused audience of Elixir professionals, head to elixirmentor.com and let's discuss sponsorship options. Is kill our process the same way I killed our shell. So process dot exit and then pass in the PID and the reason will just say crash. This could be any message, any atom or any string, I believe. And now when I hit enter, okay, we exited the shell. So our 109 process, which was our shell is crashed and now we're 111. So our shell rebooted, but the process that we created that was listening just ended because there's no restart strategy to it. So crashing that crashed our shell. So everything linked crashed. So it's pretty safe to say if you spawn a process, you want to use, you want it to be linked to the process spawning it. So what if you want to keep track of another process's state without being linked to its fate? That's where you can use spawn monitor. So if you ever spawn processes, you want to use spawn link. Okay. But if you want to monitor a process and say, we want to just know if a process crashes, but we don't want to kill the Elixir shell every time because we might have other processes we're tracking and we can't afford to crash our Elixir shell process. So we can do spawn monitor, monitor, am I spelling that right? Spawn monitor, there we go. And we can, we're gonna pass in the same anonymous function where we just are listening for a message. So receive and then do and then message and then pass through our message and then end that anonymous function and the receive block and close off those parentheses. Now, when I hit enter here, it's going to return a tuple. It returns the process ID and a reference ID. So if I wanted to, we can just go ahead and make a tuples for pattern matching and then set the variables uh, from line five. So now we have access to the PID and the reference ID, okay? The reference is just used to identify the process if it crashes. So when we monitor a process and something happens to it, it's going to send a message to our mailbox and the message type is down in all um, capital letters. So right now, if we go ahead and do process.info, pass in self, and we check our messages, we're going to have an empty mailbox. Now, if I kill our process that we're monitoring, so if I do process.exit PID, and I'm just going to call it crash again. When I do this, okay, it's true, but it didn't kill our Elixir session, okay? We're still there. We still have access to our PID variable, our reference variable. Um, but if we check this process.alive and pass in the PID, it's false. So that process is no longer running. We killed it with exit. And now if we, if we check our mailbox again, whoop, enter, we have a message of type down and we get our reference ID. It is a type process that crashed. And we also have our PID that we had reference to. And then the message that we use to exit, which is crash. So we have a reference to it now. So within our Elixir shell or whatever process was monitoring it, you could actually listen for down and then respond accordingly to what you need to do to recover from that crashed process or whatever happened to it. So that's pretty cool. It didn't kill our process like Link, but it allows us to know and receive messages that something happened to it. I'm not going to dive much deeper on this topic for this video because in the real world, it is going to be really rare to actually handle our processes like this manually. 
we are going to be using a supervisor to manage all this for us. So after we learn about Gen Server, we will be introducing the supervisor. But it's still good to understand what's happening in the background and just know that the supervisor is another process, but it manages all of our processes for us and it makes it easier for us to set strategies and how we want it to respond and things like that and it's really cool but it's kind of good to have a slight grasp of how to manually manage and spawn processes right so it's it's good to know and with that being said i will now see you in the next video